is really an exciting premiere. The whole film colony has turned out to welcome a most unusual and appealing movie star, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Here he comes now. Hello, Casper. Would you mind stepping up to the mic and telling your fans how you got your start in animated cartoons? Well, uh, you see, uh, I like animated cartoons very much, and I always wanted to know how they make them. So, I came to Hollywood. For sure. The cat grabs some bread. Makes like a mouse sandwich. Yeah, yeah. And the mouse, the rat, makes like this. drawing is made in a different position. Here, watch this. <laughs> You're clever. me an idea. Let's feature him in a cartoon and we'll call it Casper the Friendly Ghost. And that's how I got into animated cartoons. Thank you very much. Now, Casper, it's with the utmost pleasure that we ask you to place your footprint with those of the great stars of the screen. Go 
ghost's foot doesn't print. of you, young man. Oh, dear. Thank you, Sunny. My, what will those toy manufacturers think of next? Just a minute, young fella. Don't you know you're supposed to be in school? I'm the truant officer. Now, you come along with me. All you kids are alike, playing spaceman instead of learning your ABCs. Now, children, there will be a ten-minute study period. <laughs> Who wants to study when you can have some fun, huh? how well you studied. How much is two plus three? Hmm. Well, if you added them all up together like, that would be two plus three, and if you carry the two, that comes to the... Gee, why does she always have to give me the tough ones? Here's a little fellow I found playing hooky. Now, young man, since you missed this morning's arithmetic lesson, you think you could do this problem? was excellent. You may take the seat at the head of the class. Why, that big show-off! Nobody's gonna be smarter than me.
certainly have grown since recess. And where is that child who was wearing the space suit? Hey, teacher, look! A flying saucer! Oh, my! Move in. Move in? <laughs> I uh, said something funny? Yeah. If you go in there, you'll come out so fast, you'll knock yourself down going in. They got a dog? Nah. A ghost. You're crazy. There ain't no such thing as a ghost. Well, Walter Wowie thought otherwise. Uh, who's Walter Wowie? He runs a real estate office in town. One day, a fella comes into the office and says, My name is McGregor. I would like to find a tenant for my house. Oh, what sort of house is it? Mansion, 31 rooms, 15 baths, 100 acres. Type of tenant desired? Ghost. How do you spell that, please? G-H-O-S-T. You're, 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 you're serious about, about this? I am. Oh, whoa, 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 one moment, please. <laughs> but, Mr. Wowie, did you realize what he said? This man is the crackpot. A ghost for a tenant. It's the craziest thing I ever heard. Tag Nabbit, did you ask him what type of ghost? Male, female, old, young, fat, thin? Miss Mildew, we have a client outside, and you're keeping him waiting. But, Mr. Wowie, how do we find him a ghost? Remember our motto, Miss Mildew? A man wants a ghost for a tenant? We find him a ghost. You see, Mr. Wowie, I am going to Scotland for a visit. A ghost in my house would keep people from breaking in. By Godfrey, that's right. A ghost would be better than a caretaker. Exactly. And since the ghost would be doing me a service, he may live in the house rent-free. That's a mighty fine proposition for a ghost, Mr. McGregor. Mighty fine. The question is, can you find me a ghost? You're doggone tootin' again. Very good. I shall see her with a clear mind. Bon voyage! He's crazy! He's a client. How are we going to find a ghost? Why, we advertise, Miss Mildew! Advertise! Ah, help! Help! Oh, you're crazy too, Mr. Wowie! Morning, sister. Ah! In reference to your ad in the morning paper. <laughs> I understand you're looking for a real 100% genuine ghost to live in a mansion. Now, don't tell me you're a ghost. No, but it could be arranged. Ah! <gasps> Mr. Wowie, there's no such thing as a ghost, and you know it. Ah, but if there were ghosts, where would you find them? Why, uh, in a haunted house. Precisely. Hello there. Anybody home? Murder! Hello, hello! Blood! Dang, blame it. Come on out. I've got a business proposition for you. 
Boo? Howdy. Uh, ain't you scared? Scared? <laughs> You're nothing but a ghost. Uh, I must be slipping. Now let's get down to business. You know the mansion on the north side? Uh, yeah. Nice place. Well, it needs a ghost to haunt it. Think you could do the job? Could I? Just try me. Not so fast, young fella. How long have you been in this haunting racket? More than 50 years. See my hash marks? Well, I don't know. I'd like someone with a little more experience. Say, with at least a hundred years under his shroud. Please, please. You don't know what the housing shortage is for us ghosts today. Look, the, the roof leaks. The, the windows are broken. I'm f f f freezing all winter. Please, give me a chance. Well, all right, Johnny. I'll put you on probation. Yahoo! Thanks! And that's how the McGregor Mansion was rented to a ghost. Very cute. You scare away all the Lodge brothers and keep this cozy little shack all to yourself. <laughs> Great story, buddy. But there's one itsy-bitsy thing wrong with it. Yeah? What's that? Very simple. There ain't no such thing as a ghost. You no, know, you could be right at that. Stimed his reading a mother goose. Give me my book. Hey guys, how about us paying these mother goose characters a frightful visit? A ghoul idea. Thanks for the inspiration, Casper. I've got to go to Mother Goose Land and see what I can do. Mother Goose Land. Good folks, welcome. <laughs> Golly, sounds like someone's in trouble. Uh, I'm Casper, the, the friendly, friendly ghost. ghost. Can I help you? I'm little Bo Peep. I've lost my sheep. Three horrid ghosts scared them away. I should have known. <laughs> That's little boy Blue. The ghost opened the gate and let out his sheep and cow. <laughs> Listen, it's coming from the top of the hill. Why, it's Jack and Jill. Gosh, we're sorry it got splashed. Oh, that's all right. What happened? Three ghosts scared us by the well. Yes, mean ghosts. Yow. Uh-oh, sounds like more trouble. Bye now. Why, it's Jack Be Nimble. What happened, Jack? Well, just as I was going to jump over the candlestick... Well... I know the rest. Those bad ghosts booed you. I'll say they booed me. I never jumped so high before. And when I came down, I tore my pants on the candlestick handle. Gosh. Do you know someone who could sew you up? Sure. A girlfriend of mine. Let's go see her now. Okay, let's. Boy, am I mad. Little Miss Muffet, we were just coming over to visit you. Visit me? I've been visited already. Three horrible ghosts scared me off my tuffet and then stole my curds and whey. I'm furious. Curds and whey? What's that? Oh, just some milky water and cheese. <gasps> this stuff ain't very filling. Well, we got it for nothing. What's next on the scare program? We gotta find someone to scare soon, or we're gonna lose our ability. Characters of Mother Goose Land, I've called you all together to hear Casper's plan. My friends, this is my plan. 
If you all try your best not to appear scared when the ghostly trio come to scare you, they may give up and go home. Sounds good. We'll try it. It might work. I just hope they don't come to me. I might get awfully scared. Land sakes. Me too. Now how can we scan? Hey, look, the black mouth. <laughs> scanned the clock and the mouse couldn't be wider. No, sir, Casper. I wasn't the least bit scared. Well, they won't scare me. <gasps> they scared the wall away. We're not getting anywhere, Mother Goose. I know, Casper. If you don't think of something to drive away those ghosts, I just don't know what we'll do. I have another idea, but I must get a friend to help us. Don't be away long. Wendy, I need your help on Mother Goose Land. The ghostly trio are raising mischief there. But what can I do, Casper? Use your magic powers. I learned once the ghosts are afraid of giants. This is Wendy, a good little witch girl. May she borrow your goose to make a little switch? Of course she may. A switch? Boop. Abracadabra, half a quart is a pint. But now I'll change a goose into a big, friendly giant. At your service, Wendy. This is going to be our biggest scare. Huh. Howdy, fellas. A giant! A lake! There's no boat here! Only this old tub! The tub has a hole in it! How stupid can we get? We forgot we can fly! Come back and visit us soon. Thank you, Casper and Wendy. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thanks for your autographed book of Mother Goose stories. Bye!
tell you that Casper's ruining our racket. Yeah, we can't scare nobody anymore. What can we do about it? There is something we can do. Yeah, yeah? What's that? We must make Casper just as mean as we are. <laughs> We've let you get away with this friendship nonsense long enough. Now we're gonna make you just as mean as we are. No, no, not that! Grab him, man! Pull him down! No, 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 no. Sir Catnip, we 
stark poor. No money have we. Poor? Ha ha! There's no excuse. He rogues. I'm your Robin Hood from beyond the wood. I walk ye straight and narrow. And if the bad should harm the good, I use my bow and arrow. Robin Hoodlum. Yeah. 
Wait. Don't hurt a bit. Oh, Lena! I have invented the hammer, but don't smash up the fingers. My Liebchen! The inventor's wife don't have to scrub me the knees. But, Hyman, I don't mind. Lena, you go read the paper, and I do the scrubbing the scientific way. And now, with the main sail in place, we make with the scrubbing the deck. <laughs> Lena, look! Your ship has come in! <laughs> now, we wait the bucket with a rock, and she is all set. Lena, all you have to do to wash the dishes is hang them on a line with a clothespin, yeah? <coughs> and now I go to work on the washing machine. Oh, oh dear! Help! 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 Wash this with you! washing machine. So, now we add a little steam. Wasn't a ghost? Just the tablecloth. <laughs> There's nothing like going to work around the house scientifically. Max schnell! <laughs> hmm. I think I better test the rug beater. Housework with some wood for the fireplace. Oh, 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 help! Hayden, help! Ach, Himmel! can't destroy us. Oh, Lena! I first invented something to take the drudgery out of your housework. The wheel! But Liebchen! of transportation.
stay outside. The dice, boy. <laughs>
trying to kill me. Yay! to make friends. trying on your shoes. Ah, you talk with funny accent. What's your name? My name is Casper. I'm Hans. I would like to play with you, but it's lots of work I got to do. Listen, Hans, you can churn butter and play too. Yeah? Delicious. 
Delivering the milk. Please finish for the day. Okay, hands. Sir, but the dike. Ugh! A ghost! Listen, everybody! The dike is. Ugh! A ghost! They don't know where you put it all. Okay, Scouts, set up the tent. Hey, Skinny, where's the grub? Boy, this is a swell spot for our headquarters. This is gonna be some fun. <laughs> Goodbye, Ma. I'm gonna play with the Cub Scouts. I'm gonna be a Cub Scout. I'm gonna be a Cub Scout. I'm gonna be a Cub Scout. Oh, my gosh. Here comes that dopey Huey again. Eh, that monstrosity will ruin everything. Come on, fellas. Uh, Peekaboo, I see you. Oh, what do you want? I want to join the Cub Scout. If you want to be a Cub Scout, you got to do a good deed. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, 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 what's a good deed? Well, fetching a full pail of water for the camp would be a good deed. Yeah, sure, give me it. I'll do a good deed. I'm going to be a Cub Scout. I'm going to be a Cub Scout. I'm going to be a Cub Scout. <laughs> Cup Scout. <laughs> 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 
Oh, goody, a scout master. Oh, sir, I wish so much to be a Cub Scout. Uh, well, uh, all right, Buster. But first, you gotta pass a life-saving test. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Now, when saving a drowning man, always wait till he goes down for the third time. Get it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Now, pretend you're drowning, and I'll save you. Uh, here I go! Oh, boy, now for some duck soup. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> That's three. Now you gotta save me. Help! Save me! One. I can't swim. Two. <laughs> Help! Three. I saved you. Now, can I be a Cub Scout? Hmm? Huh? Can I be? Huh? No, not yet. You still have to pass the tracking test. Now, follow my footprints and track me down. Yeah, yeah. Track it down. Track it down. Okay, okay. Uh, hi. Where are you, Mr. Scoutmaster? Oh, boy, that dumb duck's goose is cooked. I wonder where he went. There, I tracked it down. Now can I be a Cub Scout? Him? Huh? Huh? Can I? Huh? Huh? No, not yet. I still have to pass my cooking test. If these uh, hot dogs don't kill that duck, Dinah might. <laughs> Look, fellas, it's the fox. Hey, what's he gonna do with that dynamite? Okay, Buster, to pass the cooking test, you gotta roast these weenies. Oh, boy, we're gonna eat hot dogs, we're gonna eat hot dogs. That's the end of poor Huey. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I call that idiot a moron. Hey, Mr. Scoutmaster. Are uh, these hot dogs done yet? Guys! Cub Scout Huey, your first duty as a member of the Fox Patrol is to raise the colors. Uh, aye, aye, sir. Чорня, орчи чорня, орчи страстня, орчи гуня. Ага, customers. Where's my husband? Where's your husband? I didn't even know you were married. You know I'm not. I gave you $300 to find me a husband. That was 15 years ago. I'm still waiting. Are you gonna find me a husband or aren't you? You'll have to wait your turn. These girls have been waiting for 20 years. What a collection of faces. I wouldn't marry them myself, and I'm 60 years old. Return my money or you'll go to jail. To jail? A disgrace. 
I'll go see my Uncle Vanya. He should lend me $300. What is a beautiful girl like you doing in a candy store? By him, that's a beautiful girl. You have so many beautiful eyes. Eyes she's got. I love you. Zelda Plotkin. How are you, my darling Boblitschka? And your mama and papa? Aha, that's nice. Oh, excuse me. I have not had the pleasure. My name is Blip I have come from the planet Galaxia. Ahu, a green horn. So, on Galaxia, there must be many eligible young ladies, yes? No, they are all very ugly. Psst, I got a proposition. You like Zelda? You think she is pretty? How would you like to marry her? You think she is going to sit and wait for you? Already she's engaged to a doctor. With a very good practice. But I am a friend of the family. To me, they will listen. For $300, I can fix everything. <laughs> What's the luck? I'll go tell her father. Ah, my two lovebirds. Come in, come in, come in. She's no good. She is an old woman. Old woman? She's falling apart. Every time I hold her hand, her eyes fall out. Ninachka O'Brien. What a doll. Is she gorgeous? Five foot one. She's a singer. What a voice. Like 10,000 nightingales. Ninachka, say hello to Mr. Spaceman. I love you. You've captured my heart. I love you. She loves she never me. never will part. You love her? I need you. That's enough. Much more than you'll ever know. Goodbye and good luck. All day long and all night. Ha! So what did you expect? She's a woman. Excuse me, the doorbell. I love you. Well, where's my three hundred dollars? Sha! I got you a husband. No, I'm going to faint. Not yet. He's a traveling man. You don't object? Anything. Just do as I say and don't ask questions. Congratulations! You just found the perfect woman. Come in. Stop. Sit down. Start talking. You promised me my three hundred dollars. Shut again. up already. That's a look. Or chichornia, or chichornia. Orci strasnia, orci gunia.
How come you ain't out there on the beach soaking up some of that glorious sunshine? The sun ain't shining for us, Cousin Hyman. <laughs> it's catnip again. So, catnip again, eh? Say, wait a minute. Don't you remember? Cats are afraid of water. So what? So just leave them to Cousin Hyman.
is the famous International House. On our right is the Hall of Science, where a meeting is now in session with the world's most renowned scientist. Golly, that ought to be interesting. Gentlemen, we are fortunate to have with us the distinguished Dr. Brainstorm, who will read a paper on his startling new discovery. Fellow scientists, I am about to reveal to you the results of my lifelong study. I have achieved the impossible. I have invented a device to defy gravity. An anti-gravity machine. What kind of a crackpot idea is that? That's ridiculous. I'm sure. <laughs> you may laugh at me now, but someday you will pay for this humiliation. <laughs> An anti-gravity machine. Who ever heard of anybody defying gravity? see that everything is in perfect working order. Good, good. <laughs> we shall see who will have the last laugh. is ridiculous, eh? Ticket for speeding. There you are. Gosh, I wonder what's going on. The strangest things are happening. This will teach them to laugh at me. must be that anti-gravity machine. It really works! We interrupt this program for a news flash. The mad scientist has just been located under the city park, and the Air Force is now on its way to bomb the area. They can stop me, eh? I'll face them. Gosh, they just can't seem to stop that anti-gravity machine. Must be a new supersonic plane. It looks like a ghost to me. Stop! 
Stop this unnecessary destruction before it's too late. Uh, uh, who are you? Why, uh, I'm Casper, the friendly ghost. I don't believe in ghosts, and you can't scare me into stopping. Now get out of here! <laughs> He's indestructible. He must be a Casper, for saving this fair city from destruction, the Federation of Scientists bestow upon you this honorary award. Spooknik Award? <laughs> Prisoner Goody is charged with conduct unbecoming a gremlin, to wit, undoing the mischief of the gremlins perpetrate. Yeah, that's right. He's a menace. Bad luck. The little monster. There ought to be a law against it. Silence, silence. Call the first witness, Terror, to the stand. Your Honor, I remember the circumstances well. It seems just like yesterday, but I'm sure it was about 200 years ago, when Meanie and me was looking for a victim. When suddenly we sees a guy flying a kite, we thought we could mischief up a bit. <laughs> And believe me, Your Honor, my name fits my nasty reputation. Yeah. And a boy, nasty! You tell him, nasty. Give it to him! He ain't nasty! Silence! Silence! And I'm gonna tell you how this goody besmirched my reputation. It was just about the turn of the century, see, that I spotted these two guys with a weird looking machine. Yeah. Are you ready, Orville? Let her go, Wilbur. Now I saw a chance for some real super mischief, which might even get me nominated for the nastiest gremlin of the year. Yeah.
guilty of being a good gremlin, and your punishment is to do one real mean deed. Guards, see that my orders are carried out. But, Your Honor, I can't be mean. I, I just can't. Everything checks out, gentlemen, and we're ready for the countdown. Now, here's the mean deed you gotta do. Foul up this rocket launching so that it don't come off. I can't do that. Remember, no takeoff. Three, two, one, zero. Nothing happened. It's a dud. He's a fake fraud. It should have worked. I can't understand it. <laughs> now, Goody is a bad, just like the rest of us gremlins. The rocket didn't take off. I wonder what went wrong. So that's it. I made it! That goody double crossed us again. Boy, what a view. This gives me a real swell spot to see if anybody in the whole wide world needs help. This way, boys. Why are you taking us to the museum, Uncle Herman? Because there's something very special I want you kids to see. And here is the first man made mouse trap. It sure does. And this is the most dangerous mouse trap of them all.
to come out. some friendly Indians. No, it should be a fantasy angle. I got it! Yeah? Casper in Mud and Goose Land. Sounds good. You see, these three blind mice that are walking along with canes and singing and... So then what happens? Well, Casper goes all the way up to Mud and Goose Land. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. See how we run, see how we run. You better watch out for the farmer's wife. She'll cut off your tail with a carving knife. Three blind mice, three blind mice. <laughs> Everybody? How's that for a story? It's cute, but Casper didn't find a friend. Yeah, no friend. Well, how about having him go to a masquerade party on Halloween? Gee, everybody is having a good time. Oh, I wish I had a costume.
very good, very good. But Casper still hasn't found a friend. Maybe he can meet up with a cute little juggling seal. <laughs> tries to swallow him. Or he might get caught in a fisherman's net. Casper could find a sunken treasure. Uh, pardon me, fellas. I've got a swell idea for an ending. He's for real! <laughs> Golly, that was just what I was going to suggest for the ending. <laughs> 